Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 5, Episode 13, Thoughts. This episode is called Principia. Another episode, not all spoilers for everything MCU leading up to and including this episode, not for the game that came out after this episode first premiered. And yes, the episode is rated TV 14, so if this video will be, let's dive right in. So, yeah, we meet Werner von Strucker or Alex Brown again. It has been a minute, and yeah, um, still really, really solid performance, and yeah, this thing, you know, I remember everything, and then he starts talking about his daughter, you know, the, the doctor's daughter, I told you I remember everything, you know, and the pen is gone, and he stabs him in the hand with it. A lot of blood for, you know, a, a pen stab, but honestly, there, there was a a brief moment where I thought, oh, is this like in his head? Is that why it's, but yeah. And, and yeah, that certainly is one way to convince them to, what was it, Thoracene. And yeah, um, I appreciate the scene of Elena, you know, she's, She's realized that basically the the prosthetic limbs is the only way she'll have arms again. But there are aspects of it that are very off-putting to her, which I've understood from research. That is something that people who get prosthetic limbs go through. You know, the, the there's a perception that oh, you know, if you lose one, you just get. If, if you can, you get a prosthetic one, and that fixes everything, and that's just not quite the case. <laughs> and, and yeah, we have the thing, you know, how will you deal with having a, a girlfriend with robot parts? Those aren't the parts that matter. Mac! I d d no, I meant heart and soul, like robots don't have. I believe him. I really don't think he was stand there saying, you know... Like, possibly if they were in private, he would be, you know, soliloquying her lady parts, but not in front of, of Gemma and just, yeah. Let's see, and <laughs> I like, the, so, so yeah, they're having the briefing and, and Deke walks in and yeah, you know, at first it is like, um, is he allowed to be in here? And I believe it was Coulson who invited him. <clears throat> and we see that Werner is in the same place now, after the doctor assault, as Ruby. And they do that classic thing where, you know, he's interested in her and she's ignoring him, you know, playing hard to get kind of thing, so above. Yeah, I'm slightly worried that they're gonna, you know, they're they're getting into territory of like, oh, you know, women are so manipulative and evil kind of thing. I don't know. Um, they do have a lot of positive female representation on the show. I, yeah, I'm hoping that it won't get like really misogynistic. And. Yeah, I quite like the, the reveal that Tony and Mac go way back, which always happy to see Jake Busey in something. Every time I watch something in like the the I guess like the nineties and he popped up, I was always really ecstatic about it. You know, he's he's great in Starship Troopers and what was it called again? Um, let's see, I have the list right here. Oh, maybe I didn't, did I not? There we go. Yeah, The Frighteners, fantastic in The Frighteners. I guess that makes you number one. And, yeah, just, yeah. So, so really glad to see him in something, and he's great here. And we have the... 
<laughs> yeah, and and he's called the Candyman, which yeah makes a lot of sense when you hear the yeah, and and yeah they they talk about you know oh there's Project Paperclip that was that for Hydra as well, and it's like you know you can't have Hydra working for the good guys. It's like the Candyman can. <laughs> and and Deke wants to play catch and and I do appreciate because I I thought that when I was a kid the first time I saw uh, catcher's mitt is that what y'all call it uh, you know what does does everybody just have really giant hands and and yeah you know the at first Fitz is like I'm not gonna play catch with you and then Deke is like well you know everybody else is gone. Maybe you and Gemma could get busy, and, and Fitz is like, you know what? I'm going to play catch just to shut you up. And... Yeah. Um, May and Daisy talk about, you know, maybe Coulson could be rescued with Deathlock tech. And that is the thing that, you know, Elena... Imprelanist, the, the future Elena told present Elena, you can't, you, you have to allow him to die. You know, that was what went wrong. That was part of why this whole thing happened. So, so hopefully Elena is going to learn that they're even thinking about this, but it's because they're not discussing this with her. They're letting her get bed rest and all. So, yeah, very, yeah, very tense. Love it. And let's see. Yeah, Werner comes across Ruby, you know, hitting a, a punching bag, and not long after he's taken her hostage to, to get an audience with General Hale. And we learn later, you know, she allowed him to do that. And and really great scene of, of them talking. You know, I, I like the thing of, you know, Hale says Hydra was such a boys club. And I mean, yeah, you know, apparently General Hale runs this place. She's brought in Ruby, and there's that tech. I, um, yeah, I'm, I'm afraid I don't, I'm not entirely sure what she's called, but she was, in addition to this episode, she was also, or tech. I don't, I don't know if she's a tech, but, you know, they were. It, Candace Lee, maybe? She's been in, in more than one episode. She was in... She was the one who discovered a genetic link between Deke and Fitzsimmons. Yeah, it seems like Hale is just open to, to having women work there. So I'm really hoping that that's not supposed to be like, ah, oh, you know, isn't it evil when women work? Again, I mean, the... So many of the, the good guys are women, and they're not misogynistic stereotypes, so, yeah. I mean, I, I don't think it's necessarily automatically always wrong to do stories where minorities are evil. It's just important to make it clear in those stories it's not that every member of that minority is evil, because that's, you know, what patriarchy and white supremacy teach. But, yeah. Um, let's see, and, and yeah, we learned that, you know, Hale has been around the whole time, you know, she was, um, she, she and Werner's father were, if not friends, at least associates, they had similar goals, or it was, there was a line to that effect. I quite appreciate Deke being compared to Scrappy-Doo, yeah, seriously. And it is very sweet that Fitzsimmons are so happy about being married and, like, saying wife and husband to each other. Let's see. And... Deke finds and enjoys a Twinkie and says, you know, ah, oh, I wish I could meet the chef, which, you know... 
is is quite funny obviously because they're not made by like a chef they're made by these machines and they're also quite repulsive honestly I actually don't I, I don't think I've ever tried a, a Twinkie that's you know I'm just basing that off my experiences with other American snacks and desserts now the yeah he he imagines his mother being there and sees her die you know he has abandonment issues because he's you know there's that line about you know what happens when you start caring about people or when you get close to someone something like that <clears throat> and it is legitimately you know yeah Gemma talks to him and you know he's like there, there's that thing about you know oh Fitz doesn't think I know up from down well, newsflash, in space there is no up or down. And then he, you know, he has the eureka moment. And and I do also appreciate, you know, they did set this up earlier. The, there was that line about, you know, Albert Einstein said, said work, the, the best way to work is to play or so, so There was something along those lines, you know. And, and yeah, um, the, the, he took a break from work and he had an epiphany. And then he cleaned up that for himself. And the, the, yeah, you know, I, I quite appreciate, you know, he runs in and, and tells Fitz, you know, maybe the ship isn't above, you know, maybe it's not under the, the you know, undersea, maybe it's up in the, in the sky instead. And after that, you know, when Fitz explains it to the others, you know, he specifically... Yeah, there's a little moment where he's like, you know, okay, fair enough. Deke was right here. And let's see. Yeah, and we see, you know, Werner has PTSD, which helps explain the violence. And yeah, you know, Ruby tries to, to appeal to him. I never knew my father neither. He always used to cheat on my mom and beat her. And I do really appreciate, you know, she, because earlier we saw that Ruby, you know, Hale told Ruby what to do. And, and now Ruby says, this is what Hale told me to do, you know, which might be a double bluff. You know, it might be that now, you know, maybe this will make Werner trust her and that allows her to, to you know, manipulate him so so yeah very very nicely done there and also because at the end of the episode ruby does you know hale is like how did you get him to stay and ruby says i told him the truth you know so yeah wait does that mean that you know she is still ruby is still trying to help hale Right. Also, I I didn't realize it when watching, but in it's it was in the the previously on, maybe not for this episode, maybe for the one before this one, where you know Hale said to Ruby, "My orders on Quake is to capture, not kill." And at the time, it seemed like, oh, it's she's reassuring Ruby, no, I'm not going to kill your your big idol. No, she was giving orders. My orders are, we thought that meant, or, or not her orders, yeah. We thought she was saying, I'm giving orders to other people to capture, not kill, but she was giving orders to Ruby. Let's see. And, you know, there, there are, it is a thing today, you know, young people questioning their, their military parents. You know, are are you sure you're one of the good guys? Because I heard about this thing, you know, which is a, a really good thing. We should always question. Power should always be held accountable. And yeah, you know, Ruby says, you know, maybe the two of us could be a team. And. See. Yeah, and and you know, Colt. Once once all the agents are on the the flying ship, you know the I, yeah, I believe it's Colson who's like, okay, keep moving, and we see you know, a little motion in the in the robot on the ground. And it's like it wasn't talking to you. Pay attention. 
seriously though, very very cool setup. Um, yeah, you know they talk about oh you know everyone on the ship you know like you who could possibly survive being you know yeah being being thrown up into the air like this and they also talk about another thing that could have killed them but yeah the robots and <laughs> mac don't touch this <laughs> oh can't touch this yeah sir not the time and yeah love when Mac, like he's he's practically surrounded by the robots, and he's like shooting and hitting. Very much got like a zombie flick feel off it. Love it. And yeah, Deke realizes Gemma must be his grandmother because you know his mother told him what her mother told her. You know, not a, what was it? Not every step has to be big. Just I have to make sure it's in the right direction. And Mac got Elena, you know, one of the robots, and they can make her arms out of that. Which is also like, if he had, if he wasn't bringing her arms, bringing her a beer would be kind of weird, I guess. Unless maybe a straw, but no, you know, he's he's like saying, you know, you're. You're gonna get two hands, then you can have two beers. Let's see. And yeah, I like what Fitz is still really not super happy about Deke. But you know, yeah, Simmons is like, I think they're warming up to each other, and, and Deke is like, sure, grandpa. Very, very fun. And yeah, so the IMDB trivia for this episode. Uh Hmm. Oh, so the the yeah when when Deke finds Twinkies, there are authentic civil defense barrels that were stored in government fallout shelters starting in the nineteen fifties. Very cool. And let's see. Hmm. In the final scene, Ruby wears a Stardust Nation t-shirt. Stardust Nation by Deborah Levy and Illustrated. I'm going to butcher this. Andrzej Klimowski is a graphic novel dealing with themes of personal identity and memory recall slash repression. Similar to what Marion von Strucker is experiencing. Very nicely done. When Coulson and Daisy first encounter Luis Casalino, Daisy lists some of his aliases. Among those are William Pratt. <laughs> which is a Buffy reference, and Marion Cabretti, Stallone's character from the movie Cobra. And let's see that. Um, <laughs> the title refers to Sir Isaac Newton's work Philosophia Naturalis Principia Mathematica, which is commonly known as just Principia. Amongst the topics it covers are Newton's laws of motion, Newton's laws of universal gravitation, laws that are relevant when you have a regular U.S. naval destroyer ship floating at 25,000 feet in the air. And... Let's see... That is... Right, uh, yeah, someone pointed out in the, in the MDB goof section if the ship really was 25,000 feet up, let's see, what does that say? That would be negative, uh, negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit, negative 34 Celsius, so negative 34 in real numbers. Yet everyone is walking around single layer clothing, no gloves or hats, and touch exposed metal with bare hands. That is a good point that I, I will say that was a really cool idea that the gravitonium you know there's only this little bit left so again they're making baby steps you know they're they're not quite getting enough gravitonium that not as much as they need but they got a little and they know whether you know the rest must be with hail 
and and this thing of the only way to to get the you know yeah they they have to get the gravitonium in this little plastic box and then run away also love that deke is like straight up an expert on gravitonium yeah you know he's dealt with it more than the rest of them have you know and he completely just super useful when when it comes to that which I also really appreciate you know a lot of the time he's being that he doesn't it's not that he's like useless but he works in a very different way from what they're used to so to them it feels like he's slowing them down you know but under the right circumstances he can be really useful so you know, I'm not sure I would go so far as to say that the character is spectrum coded, but it did feel very reminiscent of the the that kind of experience. Uh, you know, the yeah, um, yeah, and and you know, okay, so they have 90 seconds to get off, and you know, we the audience have already figured out, but there are robots on there. They don't know that yet. You know this. Obviously, if they had the their say, they would have dealt with the robots before grabbing the gravitonium. Did the robots inten intentionally wait? Because I guess they don't necessarily have any kind of... They, they probably just have programming, have, have orders. They don't have self-preservation instincts. So, yeah, they, they just, like... They might actually have waited, because I, I feel like they could probably have gotten there sooner. But they waited because they, you know, yeah, they had probably been told there's so little gravitonium left, you know, it's gonna, yeah. Um, let's see. I think, that, <laughs> yeah. I got to see a flying robot, flying boat and a robot fight. Best day ever. I was just coming to see you. Tiding of comfort and joy. Warning of doom and gloom. And see. Yeah, also, you know, one of the things Deke, you know, one of the reasons that, that Fitz really loses his temper with Deke is because Fitzsimmons knows what it's like five miles under the surface of the ocean. And Deke asks, was it a holiday? Do they have hotels? Not knowing they almost died down there. This was a traumatic experience. You know, and he's like, do you have pictures? You know, this is not what they... They already don't really want to talk to him about this experience at all. And then he's being like this, you know. Let's see. And, you know, on the other hand, you know, he says, where, where I was born, you guys already blew up the planet, so thank you very much for your service. You know, he also has this, you know, he's not loving this situation either. They're, they have the same goal. They come at and, you know, yeah, they're thinking maybe we can save the world, and he's thinking I gotta let you know prevent these guys from destroying the world. Let's see, and right, I liked you know Colson says of one of the robots, it's one of Hale's flying monkeys. Monkeys, I do not understand. I do. I understood that reference. And let's see. Yeah, there's the the bit of, you know you were hoping Cybertech can solve more than two problems, and yeah, you know, three problems, one cyborg. And let's see. I think that is about yeah and and you know there's the thing about yeah if there's a chance to save your life why not try because I already had one unnatural life extension and I don't want another we both have to accept that <laughs> 